वेलकम अगेन इन दिस सेशन वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रोकैरियोटिक सेल्स वी वुड फोकस ऑन द शेप स्ट्रक्चर एंड द कॉम्पोनेंट्स एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वुड बी द डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन द ग्राम पॉजिटिव एंड द ग्राम नेगेटिव बैक्टीरिया एंड देर इज वन और टू क्वेश्चन दैट इज डेफिनेट फ्रॉम दिस सेक्शन द ग्राम पॉजिटिव एंड द ग्राम नेगेटिव इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ लेट्स फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट द शेप्स सो आई कैन से द शेप्स कैन बी ऑफ वेरियस टाइप्स लेट्स फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद द सिंपलेस्ट वन दैट इज द कोकर शेप नाउ वेन आई से द कोकर शेप uh what does that mean it means it is a sphere or uh oval in nature so mono means single single celled if i say diplo that means two celled if i say tetra that means four celled if i say strepto streptococcus that means it's a chain if i say sarcina that means it's a three dimensional arrangement of the cells and finally if i say staphylococcus that means there is a irregular arrangement of the oval cells so that is when we talk about cocus the next is when we talk about the stacks so when we talk about the stacks we call those as the bacillus so you have monobacillus that means one diplobacillus that means two when i say palisade that means i am talking about a stack of the linearly arranged bacterial cells so we call those as palisade and you have the streptobacillus that means you have the chain of the linearly arranged bacillus the next is the spirium spirium is a screw shaped a cork screw shaped bacteria the next is vibrio vibrio is a comma shaped bacteria these are some of the common types of or the common shapes of bacteria that we talk about and finally you have the stack that is attached to the ground and budded where you have one which is further divided into subdivisions so that is budded it is stack now these were the shapes of the bacteria now bacteria can have flagella or they cannot have flagella based on that we call this as trichus so trichus is the suffix we use for flagella so if i say a trichus that means there is no flagella if i say mono trichus that means there is flagella on one end if i say amphi trichus that means there is flagella on both the ends if i say lofo trichus that means you have group of flagella at one end if i say cephalotrichus that means you have group of flagella at both the ends and finally you have the pterichic uh, pterichicus which means you have the flagella which is distributed throughout the body so we call that as pterichicus now these were the shapes the next topic that we would be focusing on is the gram positive and the gram negative bacteria as i said the most important section now the two diagrams here show the outer structure or the membrane and the cell wall region of the gram positive and the gram negative bacteria now the first and the foremost thing is gram positive bacteria is stained by iodine solution even if it is washed with alcohol or acetone it would retain its blue color blue or purple color however that color would go off in case of gram negative bacteria now this gram negative bacteria can be stained by another compound that is safranin the basic difference is between the two when it comes to mucopeptide it's 70 to 80% mucopeptide in the case of gram positive bacteria in the case of gram negative it's merely 10 to 20% the lipid content is low the lipid content is very high in case of gram negative it is resistant to antibiotics it's high, sorry it's highly susceptible to antibiotics however it is the gram negative is resistance to antibiotic this is susceptible to antibiotics there are very few pathogens which fall under the 
gram positive but there are many which fall under the gram negative the gram positive when we talk about flagella we would see they are just two rings here you have four rings that could be seen we will discuss how so you have the peptidoglycan and the lipoprotein so this would be the l ring this would be the p ring and then you would have the sm end ring however those lipoprotein rings are absent here so here you have predominantly peptidoglycan that is seen again you have the tachoic acid that is present in the cell wall of a gram positive bacteria but that tachoic acid is absent in case of gram negative gram negative on the other hand has sporine this is a single uh, 16 stranded protein uh, outlet or you can say a hydrophilic channel that acts as a transponder so you have a kind of communication with the outer environment through porine so porines are present in case of gram negative porines are absent in case of gram positive bacteria again the mesosomes are prominent in case of gram positive however mesosomes are not prominent in case of gram negative bacteria now these are some of the very fundamental differences between the two the next important thing that we would be focusing today is the components of a prokaryotic cell now prokaryotic cell has cell wall and that cell envelope we call has three parts the gycocylix the cell wall and the plasma membrane now this glycocalyx occurs outside the cell wall it has two layers the inner s and the outer mucilage this outer mucilage is made mainly of the carbohydrates however the inner s is predominantly peptides or proteins the next is cell wall now cell wall is uh, the important function of glycocalyx is it provides strength it helps to fight the pathogens it helps in attachment it prevents uh, or it gives a kind of virulence and finally you have the cell wall which gives the firmness now as we said cell wall is present in case of gram positive bacteria you do not have cell wall in case of gram negative bacteria in the sense you have the absence of the tachoic acid in the in in contrast to that between the outer and the inner membranes you have the periplasmic space that is present in case of gram negative bacteria so gram negative you have the periplasmic space that is present but in gram positive you predominantly have the tachoic acid and a uh, higher dominance of the peptidoglycan layer again you have the fatty acids that are present now these fatty acids in case of gram positive we call them as tachoic acid however in case of mycobacteria we call those as the myelochic acid so there are different names for different acids that are present in different bacteria finally you have the plasma membrane now plasma membrane is present both in gram positive and gram negative bacteria and in in all the prokaryotic cells it has the typical function it's a phospholayered uh, phospholipid which is bilayered in nature so that's the basic characteristics of plasma membrane the next important constituents fall in the cytoplasm so you have cytoplasm with the cytoplasmic space and the organelles under the organelles you would have mesosomes that are present so mesosomes are more prominent in case of gram positive less prominent in case of gram negative as we have already discussed now these mesosomes are of two types the septal mesosomes and the lateral mesosomes the septal mesosomes helps in septum formation however lateral uh, mesosomes are uh, act in the uh, respiratory enzyme formation now this lateral are not connected to the nucleoid however the septal are connected to the uh, plasma membrane uh, and the nucleoid so they help in the connection however lateral are not connected so that was about mesosomes the next is ribosomes as we discussed the prokaryotic cell has 70s ribosomes now this has two further subunits 50s which is the larger and 30s which is the smaller subunit finally you have the chromatophores that are present 
Now these chromatophores are predominantly present in the photosynthetic pigment. So most of the photosynthetic, uh, the the bacteria which do photosynthesis have the chromatophores, and when they do photosynthesis, they call it as chlorochromatophores. The next is the nucleoid. Nucleoid is ab the nucleus is absent in prokaryotic cells. So in place of nucleus, what is present is nucleoid. This nucleoid is also known as prochromosome. Sometimes it is also known as genoid. So there are various names for the nucleoid that is present. It is also known as incipient nucleus. Now this nucleoid has single stranded DNA that is present. In contrast to nucleoid, it would have plasmids. The plasmids contain Again, the naked DNA, but these would be double stranded because they are extra chromosomal and they occur in the outer areas. The next is the inculsion bodies. The inculsion bodies can be of various types. The most common is the gas vacuole. As we studied when we talked about the differences between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell, absolute or true vacuoles are absent in case of uh, prokaryotes. So, prokaryotes have complex gas vacuoles that are present. The next is the inorganic inculsions that are present or the inorganic crystals. Now these inorganic crystals are absent in case of animal cell. Now these inorganic crystals which are present in the case of prokaryotic cells can be of various types. So some of the common ones are known as volatin, sulfur and iron. Now this volatin is mainly polymetaphosphate that is present. Sulfur as the name suggests is sulfur producing. Uh, they occur in the sulfur rich medium and you have iron in the iron rich medium which is also known as the, uh, the magnetosomes. Now all these have uh, different colors with different dyes so they are known as metachromatic in nature and finally you have the food reserves. Now food reserves as we know in case of plant cell it is mainly starch and in case of animal cell it is mainly glycogen. Similarly it happens with the prokaryotes. For a blue, blue green algae it would be mainly starch. For a bacteria it would be mainly glycogen. Neutral fats would be absent in both the cases and you would have a kind of uh, uh, the, po uh, the poly beta hydroxyl butyrate uh, granules that would be present in case of uh, the prokaryotic cells. The next is flagella. We have already talked about the types of flagella that exist. Now flagella, the structure itself is important. The structure of the flagella includes the basal body, the hook and the filament. So the filament is the tubular section. So you would have the basal body, the hook which is S-shaped and the filament. This filament is the tubular body. The hook is the connecting section and is curved and you have finally the basal body. Now this would have various rings as we said. So you would have L ring from lipoprotein, P ring from peptidoglycan in case of gram negative and then so you would have S, P, uh, L, P, S and M. Now these S and M rings are present in the case of gram positive and all these four are present in the case of gram negative bacteria. Uh, so this is again very very important concept. Some cases you have inner P that is inner peptidoglycan, inner P ring that is present in case of gram positive also but that is in very very few cases. Now to understand the most important section is the difference between pili and fimbria. Now pili and fimbria are present again in prokaryotic cells. What is the basic difference between the two? So when I say pili, it's usually longer, thicker and more in number. So you would have long, thick and more in number. It helps in conjugation, it helps in adhesion. So that is one of the basic difference. Now it has a fertility by F, F plus factor. So you have the fertility factor that is important in case of pili. However, it is controlled by the nucleoid gene in case of fimbria. So in fimbria you would have the nucleoid gene which controls the fertility. Again, fimbria would be bristle-like, 
However, pili would be more tubular in shape. So based on the differences between the two, some would have pili or some would have fimbriae. And ultimately, uh, the most important thing is pili is predominantly present in gram negative. However, fimbriae is present in both gram negative or gram positive bacteria. So with this, we cover the basic aspects of the prokaryotic cells the shape components and the basic differences between the gram positive and the gram negative. In the next class, we would be moving forward with the different organelles of a cell. You can subscribe to our channel for further updates. Have a good day ahead.